Well, the first thing that uh, you normally talk about in calculus is the definition of the limit. However, this is uh, pretty abstract for most, and I know it was really abstract for me when I first uh, seen this. And uh, if you're uh, learning calculus for the first time and you haven't done anything with limits, I would suggest that you uh, first go to the section uh, uh, finding limits numerically and then come back here. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, probably even be better yet that you even looked at uh, the uh, graphical uh, discussion on limits and uh, and maybe even finding limits analytically and then come back to this section here. But uh, that's my opinion. Okay, well, um, if you've never seen this before, this is going to be a new concept uh, for you. And uh, like I said, it's kind of hard to grasp at first because of all these abstract symbols and this crazy looking notation. But uh, this is one of the most uh, essential things in calculus. This is pretty much what builds uh, all of calculus and that's uh, this idea of the limit. But uh, let me just go through read this definition here. We got, uh, we're got we going to let f be a function defined on an open interval containing c except possibly at c and let L be a real number. The statement, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to L. Now, there's another way of saying this, and uh, that's the, uh, of course, the much more abstract looking way. Um, this uh, upside down a here means for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, that means there exists a delta greater than zero such that if we have the absolute value of x minus c is greater than zero and less than delta then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Let's take a look at a graph and uh, what I mean by this. Okay, so it was uh, x minus c remember and it was the absolute value. Now um, we're going to unravel that uh, here in just a second, but uh, this is what we're kind of looking at here. And uh, you evaluate a function at C and you get L out. However, we're not evaluating a function at C. What we're doing is we're taking the limit as X approaches C. And it's equal to some real number L up here. Now, really kind of what's important here is, is uh, I think I've kind of exaggerated this, but uh, this distance right here you can see is uh, a little bit smaller than this distance here. And so this delta is going to be the delta that we choose. Now it's C plus some number right, gets us to here. And uh, this is going to be really important that we choose uh, this delta here. If uh, I end up choosing this delta, that means that I would come out to about here. And if I pick some number x inside of this interval from here to c, for example, let's say I picked an x value that happens to be, let's say, right in here, just on the uh, left side of our uh, c plus delta, that would be the red delta, then there is no f of x value that's inside of this interval here. Okay, So when we choose an x it must be inside of this interval here. Inside of this interval here. Alright, so that's pretty important. But uh, the way uh, you can also see this is f of x gets uh, close to L. Alright, that means that there's some x inside of this interval here that's getting close to c. But let's uh, unravel that definition. So this is our absolute value. It can be rewritten as x minus c less than delta x minus c greater than delta. And what I'm doing here is solving uh, for x, as you can see, in both sides. And so We've got x is greater than this, and x is less than c plus delta, but that can be rewritten as an interval.
And of course I'm doing the same thing here, just unraveling the definition. Okay, well we're jumping right on into the uh, formal definition of the limit, which was stated in the uh, previous video. And uh, so what I've done here is I've kind of filled the theorem out. This was x minus c, if you can remember, and this was f of x minus l. And uh, of course you see I'm getting that from up here. This is our c, okay? And this is our l, which is 16, and of course our function is x squared. Now we have chosen an epsilon to equal 0.1. So I'm getting close to um, our limit, or getting close to L, I should say, and uh, I'm choosing 0.1 here. And uh, the idea is, is we want to find a delta. We want to find a delta. If we're given an epsilon 0.1, we want to find, we want to construct a delta. And uh, what I'm going to do here is, is uh, I guess maybe we should just take a look at the graph first. Okay. So this right here is our C. And this is our L, which is 16. So this is uh, 4 here on the x-axis, which I don't have in here. But uh, I think you can barely see it here. But anyway. Alright, uh, an f of x <clears throat> is going to land somewhere between 16 and 16 plus our epsilon, which is 0.1, which is here. So as f of x gets closer and closer to 16, there needs to be an x down here that's getting closer and closer to 4. Now, here's the deal. I've come up here, I've got 16 plus 0.1. Now, what, for what x value can I plug in to our function that would give me out 16.1? Uh, and this is what we need to find down here. Okay, So let's go back uh, and look at the algebra. So, uh, dropping the absolute value bars, we end up with x squared minus 16. We're trying to find the solution set for x here. x squared minus 16 has to be less than 0.1, which is our epsilon. And then what we do is we flip the sign and then make this a negative 0.1. And then we come down here, or over here, I mean, and uh, bring the 16 to the other side so it becomes 16.1 and because this is square here we want to square root it. Now we're going to use the plus, not the minus side of this. And so this says that x has to be less than the square root of 16.1. And of course this one here says that x must be greater than the square root of 15.9. But to get our delta, that's the difference. Let, let's go back to the graph. Okay, so delta is this difference here. So here was our square root of 16.1 and to get this difference, right, we take the larger number minus our 4 here and that's going to give us our delta. And then of course I do this the same thing over here. Now you'd probably think that both these deltas would probably be the same but they're not. Okay, they're not. And so to find this delta here, we take the larger number, which is 4, minus, and then this piece right here, which is the square root of 15.9. Now it turns out, and I think I've kind of exaggerated this, even though it does look kind of correct here, but it turns out that this delta here is smaller than this delta. We want to choose this delta, the smaller delta. We have to choose the smaller delta, because if we choose this delta here, that means if you can imagine I'm coming out this far over in this direction right from here to here if I chose an, an X let's say here right then the F of X is outside of this interval right so uh, we have to choose an X so that it stays within the interval okay um, another thing, this is the largest such delta we can choose. We could choose actually a delta just uh, smaller than this delta here, but it can't be any bigger than this delta. Right? 
So I hope you understand why we're not choosing this delta and we're choosing this delta. Okay, in this problem here we're asked to uh, find the limit L, then use the definition of the limit to prove that the limit is L. Now to find that the limit is L, um, in this particular case here we just do what's called direct substitution, plugging 6 directly in and 6 times 2 is 12 and 12 minus 7 is 5. So that's how we find L. But uh, we want to prove that the limit is L, or in this case, we want to prove that the limit is 5. And so we're going to follow our definition here. Now let me read this again. This says, for all epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that if the absolute value of x minus 6, now went ahead and just uh, plugged in, instead of having a C here, we went ahead and put the 6 in. So x minus 6 is the absolute value is greater than 0, less than delta. Then our f of x minus our L, and of course our f of x is the 2x minus 7 minus 5, is the absolute value is less than epsilon. And here's the idea we need to construct a delta and this usually what makes these uh, problems uh, a little bit difficult is is that we need to find a delta okay I say construct a delta find a delta okay same thing but uh, so that's what we're gonna do now um, we've got this statement here and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to work backwards and I'm going to uh, take the uh, conclusion here and uh, and and find our delta that way. So we're going to start here and so I've got it written out and uh, and then we're going to go from there but uh, let me just uh, mention this. In the previous problem we uh, assigned an epsilon to be 0.1 okay so this is just a, this is more general here we're not assigning an epsilon to be 0.1 but we're just saying hey epsilon is just some small number all right, and usually we consider epsilon to be some really small number. But uh, so, okay, so this is where we're at. We want to uh, simplify this down. So negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor a 2 out. And uh, by the properties of absolute values, we can actually break this up as the two separate absolute values. And the absolute value of 2 is just 2. Okay. And so now um, I've multiplied, uh, I'm going to multiply one half to both sides. So one half times two, right, just gets rid of that. And then this becomes epsilon over two. Okay, well, we're done. And uh, this should look familiar here. This says uh, the absolute value of x minus six is less than epsilon over two. So it's a half of epsilon. It's a half of epsilon. And that's going to be our delta. Let me uh, go back up here. So you can see this is our absolute value of x minus 6 is less than, and we've said that our delta is epsilon over 2. Okay, So delta is some number, and we're going to choose it to be epsilon over 2. Now, if I put an epsilon over 2 here, we can then work forward to show that we can get this. So it's kind of like working backward of what we just got through doing here. You know, uh, you would multiply both sides by 2, and then bring the 2 inside, right, you see what I'm saying? We're basically working backwards. So in this particular case, though, we worked backwards to get forward, uh, we worked from the back, it's called the backwards method, we worked backwards, and then we're going to take that, and, uh, and then we can work back forwards to show that uh, if this is true, then this is true here. So, okay, but that's all you got to do.